No longer on the drawing board, the two launch towers of Elon Musk now come into reality. Yes, it's true. The initial construction steps on the second Starbase Tower have begun at a pace that would shock anyone, including NASA. Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. Flight 4 ended in victory, and now all eyes are on Starbase, which is in preparation for Starship's Flight 5 scheduled at the end of July. In addition, the construction progress of the second tower is also not less interesting. On June 23rd, the media recorded the image of the segments of Starbase Pad B being quickly assembled. More notably, the pair of chopsticks was attached to the launch tower. The foundation beneath, my guess, is completed significantly. Can't help but mention that several days ago, they had just lifted four steel columns of the new tower foundation vertically. On each side, the exterior wall section panels had been stacked between each corner like playing a puzzle. These walls will protect the equipment used to operate the tower, such as the draw works from the blast of launch. Once the walls are up, this section of the tower will be filled with concrete solidifying it into place. To add structural solidity, the long sections of rebar were drilled deep into the foundation and then re-solidified around the new tower. In fact, signs of the second launch tower's construction began to surface shortly after Flight 2 in November 2023. Around three tower segments were transported to Starbase. SpaceX now possesses enough segments to commence the stacking process. These segments were transported via barges from Kennedy Space Center, Florida, to the port of Brownsville, before being transferred to Starbase. Similar to the current structure, the new launch tower will comprise nine segments and stand at an overall height of 145 meters. However, due to the change of the last two sections of the tower, segment 9 becomes much heavier. This contributes to the certainty of the entire system. Elon also believes that Tower B will be robust to one thousands of landings. With such a structure, SpaceX will not use the old tool, namely the Liebherr LR-11350 crane, also called Franken crane that is used for the first tower. That's where the DMAG CC 8800, one crane, a bigger crane, comes in. According to my research, this massive crawler crane has a maximum lift capacity of 3,200 tons compared to the Franken crane at 1,650 tons. The orbital launch pad B will have its orbital launch mount facing towards the south. The information involving the shape of future OLM remains unclear. But according to the old OLM structure in Florida that was demolished a few months ago, perhaps the current six-leg design will not be suitable anymore. This is probably because recent Starship flights have shown the SpaceX team the benefits of tripod design and the shortcomings of the current structure. Thus, researching and redrawing design drawings should be a compulsory requirement. This view is rejected by another because any change in the foundation will lead to the overall redesign meaning they have to start from scratch. It will take more time, not to mention the water deluge system with the current OLM is still good, but if that is possible, Starbase's original launch pad would also be demolished and reconstructed someday. The timeline for the finish of construction on this new launch tower by SpaceX remains uncertain. However, because the construction begins early in the second quarter, there's a likelihood that the work might conclude in early 2025, less than one year. When setting up the previous launch system, SpaceX dedicated over a year from around July 2020 to August 2021 to finalize fundamental structures like the launch mount, launch tower, and Mechazilla arm. Following the maiden flight, additional time was spent, extending over a few months to incorporate the water deluge system beneath the launch mount. Considering the acquired experience, construction of the new tower might progress more rapidly potentially facilitating readiness for operation by no earlier than the first quarter of 2025. So, how about you? Do you think the second tower will take less time for construction than the first counterpart? Say yes if you agree. Anyway, if you find this useful, please give us a share, like, and subscribe. Your support will be a huge motivation for us to release more quality videos in the future. And now, let's come back. Launch towers for rockets are nothing new. NASA also built the Mobile Launcher 1, which is responsible for transporting and supporting NASA's Artemis moon rockets. With Mechazilla, SpaceX thinks bigger than that. In December 2020, 
Musk claimed that the firm planned to use the launch tower's arms to catch the Super Heavy booster as it returned to Earth. This sets SpaceX's Mechazilla apart from NASA's counterpart. NASA's mobile launcher 1, ML-1, is 115 meters high, shorter than SpaceX's OLET. At first glance, we can see clearly NASA's structure looks complicated with tons of small features. ML-1 consists of a two-story base that is the platform for the rocket and a tower that will be equipped with a number of connection lines called umbilicals and launch accessories that will provide SLS and Orion with power, communications, coolant, fuel, and stabilization prior to launch. The tower also contains a walkway for personnel, equipment, and astronauts entering the crew module during launch preparations. By contrast, SpaceX's launch tower is much more simplified, following exactly the motto, the best part is no part. It includes a pair of chopsticks to grab, lift, stack for the ground activities, and catch the vehicle after landing. To be honest, to catch and hold precisely the largest rocket ever built, SpaceX must improve and optimize every corner of the system. This is something no one has ever done. Even NASA's launch tower is not designed to catch anything. Additionally, the process of stacking the Sushesa rocket on the tower also has many steps. During preparations for launch, the crawler transporter will pick up and move ML-1 into High Bay 3 in the Vehicle Assembly Building. The launcher will be secured atop support posts, called mount mechanisms, and the crawler will move out. The Orion spacecraft will be stacked atop the SLS rocket and processed on the mobile launcher. The launcher is designed to support the assembly, testing, checkout, and servicing of the rocket, as well as transfer it to the pad and serve as the structural platform from which it will launch. Unlike NASA's system, thanks to being fixed in one location, SpaceX just needs to transport two stages of rockets to the launch pad. Then, the chopsticks will lift and stack them. Another benefit is that SpaceX can integrate the water deluge system beneath the OLM and the rocket, fixing it in there. The system acts like a gigantic bidet, much more effective and optimized than NASA's fire sprinkler system. Despite being more complicated and less effective, it does not mean NASA's system is low cost and easy to build. The report published in March 2020 by NASA's Inspector General found that the total cost of constructing and modifying the structure, known as Mobile Launcher 1, is at least $927 million. This includes the original $234 million in development cost to build the tower to support the Ares-1 rocket. Following the cancellation of Ares-1, NASA spent an additional $693 million to redesign and modify the structure for the SLS rocket, beyond its original estimate for modifying the launch tower at just $54 million. The excess cost is due to a cost-plus contract with a company named Vencore, which provided designs for ground support equipment, the report said. The company's contract started in March 2011, but until 2022, we just witnessed the launch tower's operation in the launch of the Artemis 1 mission. In conclusion, NASA spent a decade and nearly $1 billion on a single launch tower, while SpaceX's first tower just costs 13 months and less than $100 million. Moreover, after the force of the SLS rocket, blew off the structure's elevator doors in November 2022. We had to wait one year to see NASA roll the mobile launch tower to the pad for Artemis II's pre-flight tests. SpaceX also faced a similar incident as its launch complex was damaged due to the frenzied force of the 33 Raptor engine in Flight 1. Nevertheless, they just took several months to recover and upgrade their infrastructure. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.